So if you don't already know, Node.js is single threaded, meaning that if you have CPU intensive work, it's not gonna be that efficient. It's not gonna utilize all of your cores because it's just gonna run all your CPU stuff on one thread. So one approach that you can use to get around that is use something called Node Worker Threads, which I'm gonna show in this video. Let's just start off with the demonstration of the issue. So I have a main file here. And all it does is it loops through a thousand frames. It generates some frame information and then it tries to create a image for a video, like a frame on a video, and it puts it inside of a frames folder. So if you look at this image right here, there's a StarCraft II image. All it's supposed to do is just draw this image a thousand times, but also like shift it over and like have it slowly move across the screen. Let's run this. I'm also going to time it and we'll see how long it takes. And you can see it's uh, building up these frames here and it's taking some time to actually process this. If you look at some of these frames, you'll see it's slowly shifting over until the very last frame and then it'll probably go off the screen, okay? So that's the functionality. And while that's running, let's talk about how the worker works. So going over here, we have a canvas. I'm using Node Canvas. And then we create a canvas and then we slowly draw the image shifting over based on a parametric equation over here. Um, and then finally we output the frame and we write it to a file. Okay, so that's how you're seeing all these frames pop up. And as you can tell, I mean, it took about 43 seconds to do a thousand frames, which is kind of slow because on my computer, I have, I think 11 uh, logical cores and I could potentially do a lot more processing concurrently. So now what we can do is let's go back over here and we are gonna bring in the implementation for the workers. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uncomment some code I have here. What this is doing is instead of calling create frame directly, it's gonna create X amount of workers. I have four workers. And the way you can do this is you basically say new worker and you point it to the file that you want to initialize as a worker, All right? Now I use JavaScript for the worker because I couldn't figure out how to like get this to work with TypeScript. It seems like this doesn't understand the TSX command I'm using. Um, so if you do know, leave a comment. So I create four workers and then I basically loop like I did before, but every time I'm trying to process this frame, I just pick the next worker. I'm just doing like a, a cycle where I increment the next worker by one and I mod it. And I basically push a message, okay? This is how you can communicate with your workers because now we have basically four threads that we can use to push work to. So let's look at the worker over here. The only thing that changes in the worker is now you have this parent port, which gets imported from node worker up here. And this is how you can listen to messages from the parent. Also, this is how you can send a message back. You see parent port .post message done. So the create frame code doesn't change at all. The only thing that changes is like now we're doing message passing between the, the main node thread and then these worker threads. So let's try running this and see how much faster it's able to do it. I think I did 43 seconds last time. So let's run this again. I'm also forgetting the import worker. That would probably be kind of important to do. So import worker and let's run this. And I'm also forgetting to import this. Welcome to Node.js, everyone. For some reason, when you use like TSX, uh, like dir name is not defined, so I have to like do this weird hack logic. But let's just go ahead and run this. I want to point out that you'll kind of notice that the entire thing just freezes up because there's some more optimizations that you have to do. The issue that I'm having right now is that I just pushed a bunch of work to these workers and I didn't limit how much work I'm passing to these. Okay, so I basically said just throw 250 frames for every single worker and my computer basically locks up a little bit. So one approach is you can use like a, a queue or a semaphore is what I'm going to bring in. So I found the semaphore class, which you can pass it a max amount of workers. And so we have this semaphore object now and down here, what we could do is just do semaphore acquire, which basically only allows one of these messages to be processed at once. And then we're going to say semaphore um, dot release. Okay. This is just, an, it's like another form of a queue or a lock. You can go look this up. I'm not going to really talk about the code too much, but um, it just allows one message at a time. Or if I went here and changed this to like four or five, it would allow four or five messages at a time. All right. So that should help prevent my computer from just completely locking up. Let's run this again. Here we go. Now we are cooking. This thing is going a lot faster than it did. I think it's going to take maybe 12 seconds. Let's see. Now you might have noticed this thing just kind of gets stuck because we don't know when to kill it, right? We don't know when all the workers are done doing this work. So now what we need to do is we are going to go ahead and post back that done message and do something with it. So over here, 
Just do a little bit of refactoring. I'll just say const worker is equal to this. And then we're going to say worker. And then we're going to say worker.on. And then we'll say done. And then we want to do something. In fact, I might actually move the frames up here so we know how many frames we're going to do. And then we're going to say basically, um, we'll say remaining is equal to frames. And then we're going to say remaining minus minus. And if remaining is equal to zero, we are know, we know that we're done. And then we could potentially just kill all the, the worker threads. So I believe we can just say worker dot and then terminate might be the way you do it. And then that will basically kill all the workers. And then this thread would just basically end naturally. So let's try this. I'm going to bump up the workers to eight to really utilize all the cores. In fact, I could probably do 12 because I think I have a, a decent amount of cores and threads I could use. Let's run it again. And hopefully this all works. Let's run it. It's going to run a lot faster, hopefully. Actually, this needs to be a message, and this will be the actual like the message we get back. So this will say done, but uh, it doesn't really matter. We just need to listen for any type of message and then like kill it. I didn't prepare for this video too well, I'll be honest. Um, so we're going to keep on just adding code until we get this working. So kill all workers. We basically need to loop through, terminate every single worker that's in this. This needs to be an await. This needs to be an async. And we're going to go ahead and call this because before I was just killing one of the workers, we want to kill every single one when any of them gets the uh, the last message. All right, let's try this. I think this should hopefully do the trick. Let's run this. There we go. It's done. I'm assuming you got it, but uh, let's just go ahead and pretend like you don't got it. And let's just make a quick little diagram. So if we have, let's say, three workers here, what's happening is we have the main thread, and we have worker threads, OK? And then when this application first loads, it basically spins up these worker threads and then it creates a channel between them so they can communicate bidirectionally. So they can send messages back and forth. Okay, that should make sense. And each one of these threads can utilize more CPU on the machine so that we can process stuff faster. So when we want some work done, we send over that message here. The worker thread processes on it and then it sends back a done message. And we basically just check if all 1000 done messages come back, we know that we can actually just kill all these worker threads, which allows the main thread to end naturally. And then the entire process basically kills. Again, all the worker threads run on one process. This is one process on your computer. And then these are just different threads that Node.js or the V8 engine spin up. OK, so that's kind of how it works. Um, I know this is kind of all over the place, but let's do one last test. Let's do a thousand frames and let's do like eight workers. Now, at some point, you have to find like the sweet spot because you'll start seeing like diminishing returns. And so you kind of have to keep playing around with the max workers to figure out how long does it take to do a thousand frames with max workers of eight. Took about 10 seconds. If you do max workers of 16. We could see what this does. OK, that took nine, which is a little bit faster, but we are hitting some type of limit. So there are some things that you can do at this point to performance tune. And one of them is we don't need to reload this image every single time. That's probably a slow process. And then you can also just add some like uh, load image debugging to figure out, OK, how long does it actually take to load in this image? Because one thing that you'll need to remember is when you're doing performance tuning, you want to spend time trying to speed up the slowest thing, especially if it's in a for loop. And this is taking uh, 26 seconds to load an image. So yes, this is definitely something that we need to move off because this is not very performant. OK, so let's just go ahead and say const image is going to be equal to undefined. And then we could just set it to an image. So we'll say image like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, if there is no image, let's load one in. Oh, this is a JavaScript file, so I can't do that. OK, so a little bit of a change. It took like two lines of code. But let's run this again and try to see how much faster it loads now with the same amount of workers. Oh, that needs to be a let. All right, let's run it. All right, so the whole thing, that took now five seconds. So making like three lines to cache that image so we don't keep loading it over and over again saved us almost, it, it reduced half the time. Okay, that one also took five seconds. Let's see if we can do like four. So definitely do some binary searching to figure out what the best max workers is for your setup. Um, if you're hosting, oh, that even that's even slower. Let's go to 12. 
that was 5.8 seconds by 16. Now, another thing you can do to verify that like this is actually working the way you think it should, you can go and load up like HTOP and this will show you the CPU usage of all your threads. So let's just go ahead and bump up the frames real quick. And then we're going to run this and look at HTOP and see does everything seem to get maxed out? And you'll see that it's maxing out every single thread on my machine, um, which is good. And it looks like we only have 11 of them. So it would make sense that max workers of 11 might be the theoretical like best you can do on this machine. Um, so let's just stop this and let's go back down to a thousand and see if that'll give us the lowest time that we can potentially achieve. Yeah, 5.8, that's basically the lowest time I've seen. So now at this point, there's nothing more you can really do to like speed this up. Maybe you can try putting the semaphore to two and see if that speeds, speeds it up any. Um, maybe instead of creating the canvas every single time, you could create the canvas outside and then you basically would have to clear the canvas on every single loop. So I don't know if that'll make it any faster. I'm mean, guessing creating a canvas would probably um, take a little bit more resources. Like if I say context clear rec before we actually drew the image, maybe that'll speed it up a little bit. So we can just go ahead and try running that and see. And that did speed it up, 5.3 seconds. That's the fastest I've seen so far. And so you just keep going down this list and figure out, okay, is there different things we could potentially do? And I think the last thing, I mean, this is a pretty simple uh, program. You could get rid of the console logs. That'll probably speed it up some. So let's see if it beats 5.3. 4.4. So console logs do slow down the program quite a bit, especially if you're logging out thousands of them. So run it again. 4.5. Okay. All right. Now let's wrap this on a time end and figure out how long does it take to draw an image. So for drawing an image takes around 47 to 30 milliseconds. Um, I don't know if there's any performance optimizations you can do here because ultimately like you have to loop over like every pixel of the canvas and draw out the image because we're shifting it. But leave a comment if you can think of a way to improve this. But yeah, about 30 seconds of drawing. Let's try this whole section down here and just see like how long does it take to write an image. So write, uh, write file, I'll say. Run that. Writing a file, it doesn't take too long. It's like five to six milliseconds. So there might be a way to speed this up as well. Like maybe instead of waiting for this file stream to finish, we could do something different. But at some points, like the juice is no longer worth the squeeze, right? You're gonna be spending a bunch of time to try to shave off an extra second. And then you just ask yourself, I mean, this only took four seconds to run. Is that fast enough? Probably. So that is how you can use worker threads in Node. Very cool, very awesome. If you're doing some type of thing such as creating a bunch of images like I just did, signal processing or needing to take a task and split it up into multiple things that really need the CPU to get it done. Um, that's how you can do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and learned something. Have a good day. Happy coding.